Hey guys, my name is Shai, and today I am actually answering somebody's question. And this question was asked by the amazing and the beautiful and the absolutely ingenious Nikki. Um, when I read her question, bells just started going off in my mind and I thought it was so perfect. I was so inspired to answer like it in the video. Um, so I'll just let me, <laughs> let me read you the question and then I will share what I have to share on this. So Nikki says, I'm confused about getting out of lower vibrational emotions like despair, etc. If you're all love and light, doesn't that go against the whole neutrality thing? And then isn't that too much polarity? How can you have the balance and still increase your vibration? <laughs> this question struck me as so ingenious. Um, like Nikki, what I actually said to you was, I have never heard anybody ask such an insightful question ever. And I was not at all exaggerating. Like <laughs> this is the question, right? That this is it. This is what we're here to figure out. This is the great conundrum. And of course I don't have like <laughs> the answer, right? But I have, um, you know, been thinking about this for years and I, even I wasn't really able to articulate the question in that way, like to myself. So I'm going to try to just kind of share my experiences with this so far, the thoughts that have ran through my head and just kind of go with that. I have a ton of notes here. So, <laughs> okay. So there is, I think like a short answer to this question. Um, and it's basically that you just drop into the observer state and completely dissolve your ego and then just poof. <laughs> right. Um, and you can do that. You can absolutely do that. You can have experiences of in meditation right now of having an ego death experience and returning to source. <laughs> That's the short answer to the question. But of course, um, most of us aren't doing that on a regular basis, right? And there's a good reason for that because we are trying to figure out how to do this without leaving our bodies. It's like, how do we take our bodies with us? How do we do this while still being in our bodies? That is why this is such a confusing question. That is why everything on earth is the way it is. That's what this is all about. That's this is, this is like the one question. Okay. So as we try to figure this out, what's the long answer, right? What is the long answer? And my, I do feel like this kind of comes in phases. Like I've been through stages of this, but my list here isn't really going to be in any particular order. So don't worry about the order. Um, the first thing is, well, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the absolute importance of practicing non-judgment. And this absolutely comes in stages, right? First, um, you know, there are some things that it's easy for you not to judge, right? People who look different than you, right? You don't, you don't judge them for that. Um, but of course we all have a line. Every single person has a line where we look at, somebody who's done something and we go, I'm going to judge that. Like, I can't help it. Right? Like this is black and white. I have to judge that. And I have to judge it as bad. Of course, of course we all, we all have a line, right? We all have a line. Um, but that's why it's this practice of non-judgment where you, you keep finding ways, um, and you keep coming into deeper levels of understanding where you can expand your bubble of non-judgment. Right. And, uh, this was a big theme for me last year where, you know, I was expanding my bubble of non-judgment and I found that <laughs> what was the first thing I started judging when I did that is I started judging people who were being judgmental. <laughs> and I was like, you shouldn't be judging people. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so this definitely includes that you just entirely dropping out of, um, judgment. Every time, every time you see, you feel yourself getting that judgy, judgy feeling, right? Just noticing it and don't even judge yourself for being judgmental. That's like a big one, right? Don't judge yourself for being judgmental. Don't judge others for being judgmental. Just try to be like, okay, I was judgmental or okay. That person is being judgmental. It's just part of the process. <sighs> Another thing is basically getting, uh, getting comfortable and accepting pain, pain, all kind, whatever your pain is, right? Physical pain, emotional pain, mental pain, heartbreak. And whenever I think about this, I come back to the old Buddhist idea of pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. And I know that that sentence can actually be triggering to people because the first time I read it when I was like 16 and first like was introduced to Buddhist ideas, uh, I was like, I had the shit triggered out of me. I was like, what do you mean suffering is optional, right? If I'm in pain, I'm suffering. 
right? <laughs> um, so, you know, 15 more years of suffering in my life goes by and I find out that I am continuously suffering because I need to get okay with that, right? For, for me, the pain was mostly like, you know, like mental illness type of level of pain, right? And this is, I mean, you know, we can talk about it, but experiencing this is another thing of getting, just getting really okay with your pain, right? If you have physical pain in your body, like chronic physical pain, right? People who, who have chronic pain for their whole lives need to, on some level, like learn to accept the pain. Like this is that, I know some people with chronic pain, right? And they talk about that. They talk about coming into deeper levels of accepting the pain and just being okay with it and going about their lives and understanding that they can be in physical pain and yet still find joy in, in their day, right? Same thing with any other type of pain you're experiencing. You can just be like, okay, this is happening to me. I, I accept this, right? Because I think, of course, when we're in pain, it literally triggers our fight or flight reflexes in our brains and in our bodies, right? And in our um, nervous system. Um, and coming into a level of um, equanimity with whatever your pain is stops the flight or fight, <laughs> the fight or flight um, response. And that helps with this coming, coming into acceptance of your pain and just being okay with it, just being okay with it. Like if you wake up and you're really depressed or you're manic or you're anxious or you're in horrible back pain or you're like, just had your heart broken, right? Whatever it is, you can just be like, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm at. And that's okay. I can just be like this today. I can just be like this <laughs> and it's okay. I, I can just exist like this. And that, um, that's a stage. That's a stage of getting, getting really comfortable, getting okay with your pain, accepting the fact that pain is part of your experience, right? <sighs> oh yeah. And then the next thing I wrote down was acceptance of trauma. Same thing. <laughs> Whatever happened to you, that was so unforgivable, right? The first step is just actually getting like really accepting that it actually happened because you know, when, when you have something like the worst day of your life is happening. The worst day of your life is happening. Like literally right now, suddenly you're like, oh my God, I, right now I'm in the worst day of my life. You go into shock, right? You can't comprehend that the worst thing just happened to you. Then, then you go through this process of that actually happened, right? Like that actually happened. I actually saw that. I actually lived through that. I actually experienced that. I actually lost that, right? Getting like, it, to be even to be able to admit to yourself that it actually happened, that's a huge step. That's a huge step because your mind is like going to not be able to process it, right? Accepting that whatever traumatized you actually did happen, like really, <laughs> really getting okay with that. And then, okay, then we move up into intellectualizing the silver lining. Get intellectual about it. I, for me, I definitely went through this mind process with this first before I really started to have the experience of embodying any of this. So I, I would do things like going, okay, um, this bad thing ha is happening in the world or this bad thing is happening to me. And I would think about how is this actually serving us, right? You can play the mental game, the, me the mind game. How is this actually a blessing in disguise? What is, what is the good that is being served here, right? And of course, you're going to have levels to this. You're going to be able to go, okay, I cannot see how that is good on any way, shape or form. But you start with things that you can kind of intellectualize and understand, be like, Okay, um, personal example for me, right? My childhood bullies, <laughs> my childhood bullies that ruined my childhood and made me completely miserable. And I just went home crying every day, went to school crying every day, blah, 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 right? <laughs> for a long time, that, like, I had a lot of baggage because of that. And I was like, that there was no good that could have come of that, right? That was just torturing me for no reason. And now, now, like, thank you, my beautiful bullies for helping me and serving me in such a profound way. Like I am so grateful that I was bullied. And if I had to rewrite the story of my life, I would not change that. I would not change it because I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for what I learned through that. And every, all the time, all the time, I always see adults, people who are around my age, shit, even like, <laughs> even people older, like way older than me, like, like my grandparents, right? I see them struggling to learn lessons that, and I'm going, I learned that when I was a kid. I learned that lesson when I was a kid. Whatever they're going through now in their 80s, I learned that when I was a kid and I learned it because of my bullies, right? <laughs> because I was bullied, I, I, there was so much, it like forced personal growth at a young age, right? And um, yeah, so of course it, you might be able to, okay, I, I can understand the silver lining behind bullies, but of course there's gonna be deeper levels of things, like more 
traumatic things that happen to children that you're going to have to struggle with, right? That's going to be even harder to find the silver lining and to find how that actually served someone, right? But you start with what makes sense, <laughs> what you can kind of understand, and then you can grow, right? This is about like growing your bubble of neutrality, growing your bubble of non-judgment. Um, and you just, you just go with wherever you're at, never judging with wherever you're at, right? That's part of it. Never judge with, never feel bad about where you're at. Never feel bad about being confused about any of this because of course you're confused. We're all confused. We're all just trying to figure this out, right? <sighs> yeah, and then non-attachment to negative things was my next note. What was I really, th I mean, what was I thinking about specifically when I wrote this? <sighs> non-attachment to negative things. <sighs> I think what I had in mind <laughs> when I wrote that down, because like, I mean, that's pretty general, right? That's kind of this whole thing. Um, it feels like... Okay, so I used to have a really hard time when something negative would happen to me, it would loop in my head. It would loop, 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 and I couldn't, I, I couldn't get away from it. I couldn't get away from it because I was like attached to it. Because when something negative happens to you, like maybe you got like a surprise $10,000 bill in the mail, right? Maybe you're getting sued. Um, maybe someone like crashed your car and like isn't paying for it properly or something like whatever happens, right? You get so, like your human mind, your physical body gets angry, right? You start releasing dopamine and adrenaline and that's actually addictive in your body and you start looping this and you're just like, <laughs> right? So actually detaching yourself from the negative things and allow them to just like exist in, like exist, right? Allow them to just exist and not really... Feed, don't feed them your energy, right? Be, just be like, okay, just see it and then take your attention away. Just see it and then take your attention away. You're only putting your attention on it when you have to be dealing with it. Just be completely non-attached. Just let the negative things exist out there. Don't like, <laughs> don't fixate on it. Don't internalize on it. Of course, this is like easy to say, incredibly fucking hard to do. Um, you know, like I have ADHD or, you know, and I sometimes wonder if I should say I had ADHD because uh, my symptoms kind of like mysteriously disappeared right around the time of my awakening. So like I, I have only like a little, little bit of ADHD, but you know, for my first 30 years of life, that was my reality. And um, ADHD, you know, as a lot of you probably know, isn't only having trouble concentrating. It can also manifest as having trouble taking your attention away from something. Like you can get tunnel vision fixated on something. So <laughs> learning to take your attention off of something that is negative, so important. And this is even like, this is like, you know, looking at your phone in the morning, right? Like you're like, oh my God, look at all these like horrible headlines on the news. It's like, take your attention off of that. Take your attention off of that because it's just, Looping, looping, looping. <sighs> okay. Experience the negative turning into the worthwhile positive and discovering that it actually all does make sense. This is, um, I drew a line. So I think I was saying that this is like the next level of this, right? So we've been talking about the kind of, what were for me my first steps, um, how I started working through this, how I started to just try to build my bubble of non-judgment, build my bubble of neutrality. And then I, then I had actually started to pay off. This is when you level up. This is when the, your whole life and your whole perception of reality starts to shift because you're not just mentalizing it any, anymore. You're not just taking it on faith. You're not just watching YouTube videos and listening to someone talk about it, right? You're actually experiencing it in your life when the things that were so horrible actually, you actually see them in your actual life turn out to be so good, right? Just things being miraculously transformed. <laughs> and so some of you are watching this going like, I've never had that happen. I don't believe that that's going to happen. And that's fine. You don't need to believe it's going to happen. Although believing that it could happen will help, right? If you can't convince yourself that the negative will turn into a worthwhile positive, if you can't convince yourself that you will one day be standing in a drastically improved life going, it was all worth it, just try to believe that that could happen, right? That it is possible, that you could just kind of imagine, sure, maybe there's only a 1% chance of that happening, but it could happen, right? Just imagine it happening. That starts to help. And then, of course, once, once you've had that happen once or twice, when you go, wow, I cannot believe it was all worth it. I cannot believe I understand why all those horrible things happened to me. Um, and even looking out into the world and seeing like global level events or just like groups of people, um, whatever, whatever 
whatever the thing is for you that's happening out in the world, you'll be able to look at that one day and see the big picture of it. Like see the massively zoomed up big picture. And this is when I talk about zooming your perspective all the way out, like all the way up, all the way out to source level consciousness. If that's the, the level of perspective that you need, if that's the big picture that you need. And then you, then you can see that every single thing that is happening in the entire universe is just the journey of fragmentation, right? The, the exhalation of source out into its little fractals and pieces and parts, and then the in-breath of everything coming back together. That's all there is. It's just the breath of the universe. So from that perspective, you can come to the conclusion that none of this really matters, right? <laughs> Even if the worst happens, it wouldn't matter because, uh, you know, eventually everything leaves its body and returns to source. And that's, that's the story, right? It was just the breath of the universe. So you can take your perspective all the way back to source if that helps. And okay, the next thing I wrote down, and this is something that the Arcturians showed me, the 9D Arcturian Council in particular. Um, Arcturian consciousness, as far as my experience has been, is they're the masters of this. Like they're the ones to go to if you want to invite galactic assistance on this, right? Um, to hold pain and darkness gently, hold it gently. And I'm going to try and describe, I think I've described this in some other, uh, some other video, but you know, I'll just do it again here. The 90 Arcturian Council, they show themselves to me, like the, the, I've had this experience of, they're like a purple and violet multidimensional, like tentacle monster is actually what I call them, right? They just have all these swirly, 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 swirly arms. And you know, a lot of like Hindu uh, art depicting Hindu gods and goddesses show them with like the many arms going like, going like this. <laughs> that's that's what some of these um, higher dimensional consciousnesses is how I see them, right? That's why it's not arms. They, they have the, like these tentacles and their their tentacles going off in this like spiral, right? Are they're like tubes? They're like quantum tubes, like tunneling out through the dimensions. They're like sensory. That's how they sense the universe. Because um, these 90 Arcturians, they say that they are aware of every single thing, every single vibration happening in our universe at their level of consciousness and below. So every single thing, every every tiny, tiny, tiny vibration that happens on Earth or anywhere else in the entire universe, they are aware of it. So clearly they have this level of mastery because they are aware of every single iota bit of pain that's happening on Earth, right? And all the other lower vibrational um, experiences and yet they are this disembodied cosmic consciousness that is just existing in pure light, right? How is that possible? How do they do it? So what they showed me is that they take their like sensory tentacle tubes and when they find something that is painful, when they find something that is dark, right? When they, when they sense a pocket of darkness and they are sensing all of the darkness in the universe, right? They, they just show me that they just like, cook, they just like surround it they just surround it with their light. They just surround it. And this is like a vibrational thing. So it's like they can firm up their light tentacles. <laughs> if I can go, I'm going to just call them that because that's what they're like to me. If, if they firm them up, then the, the vibration of the thing that they're holding vibrates them more, right? So if they find a really awesome vibration that they love, they want to hold it very like like firmly, they want to really be feeling it because then that lights them up and that's a good vibration. But if they find a dark vibration, a low vibration, a painful vibration, they hold it oh, 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 so gently, just so gently. And it's like, it's soft. They literally make their light softer and they just kind of hold it so that they can, they know it's there. They can sense it. They, they know what's happening. They, they can feel what's happening with that person or that vortex or whatever. Um, but they just hold it so, so, so gently. Um, and that way, even though they are aware of it, it doesn't, like ripple out through their consciousness. It doesn't amplify itself, right? It's like a little contained, little container. They make a container out of it and they just contain it very, very softly, very, very gently. And that really helped me when they showed me that. That so helped me. And I was like, okay, so if, <laughs> you know, whatever I see that is negative and dark in the world and I'm trying to be neutral about it, I just like very, very gently contain it, right? I'd be aware of it. I let it be there. I can surround it in my light and I can just be aware of it without like internalizing it, without sucking it into my body and absolutely without amplifying the energy. Just want to let it be, just let it be, just let it be, give it its time so that if that pocket of energy wants to evolve, it can. And that's just it. You just hold it and be aware of it very softly, very, very softly. 
awareness of boundaries, know when to stop sensing something. So to me, I think I was, I was thinking about basically the news and the toxic people in your life when I wrote that. Um, you know, I, I have purged the news from my life. Like I had to go through my phone and every time that, you know, there's headlines coming up on everything, basically, um, I don't, I don't want to hear any of that because <laughs> it, it literally is just bringing me down. But so then it's like, Hey, well then you're just rejecting the, the like, you know, so this is where this, you know, Nikki's question comes in. It's like, Hey, well then you're just rejecting darkness or you're judging darkness or you're trying to like send it away from you. Right. This is the balancing act. This is the hard part because at first, yeah, I was like giving myself space from headlines, right? From headlines. Cause I just didn't, I didn't want it in my environment and I was just giving myself space and I was like kind of rejecting it and getting rid of it. Yes. Um, but as I kind of go around building my reality bubble, right? Building my reality bubble, I find that now if, you know, I see a bunch of headlines, I can just kind of look at them and read them and then let them go right? Without really reacting to them. So non-reaction, right? Non-reaction, just going, okay, that's happening. That was that headline. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, people are trying to insert their news headlines into my reality, whatever. It's just, right? Just letting it go aside. And then this is, this is the trick. This is, well, this has been the trick for me, right? Because then you go, okay, so do I need to be engaging in all of this negativity and darkness because I don't want to, you know, if I'm all love and light, then sh it, like, should I, should I be engaging in negativity and darkness so that I'm balanced, right? It's like, how do you, how do you make this work? So for me, the trick has been that to understand that it's all about choice and it's all about preference, 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 like preference, right? That's the big thing. It is absolutely okay and absolutely encouraged to use your free will to choose your preferences, <laughs> to choose your preferences, right? That's it. You're allowed to have preferences. You're allowed to have preferences. And, you know, I'm going to assume all of you watching this, or most of you anyway, <laughs> are going to prefer to choose love and light, right? To choose to prefer love and light because that makes you feel better, right? You, you want to, do you prefer to feel better or do you prefer to feel worse? What, what do you want? <laughs> um, so it's just preferring it. But this, I think the word preference is really good because that helps you practice non-judgment about other people's preferences, right? It's like, do you judge somebody because they like pineapples on their pizza or because they don't like pineapples on their pizza? <laughs> you know, I mean, so yeah, uh, you know, you could get into a pineapple on pizza war, but you know, maybe all in good fun, right? But typically you're not going to be that judgmental about pineapple on pizza. You're just going to be like, yep, I like pineapples on my pizza or no, I don't prefer pineapples on my pizza. And that's kind of just it. Right. And when you take that to, to the way people live right into the, um, lifestyles that people have to the things people want to do, if you just focus on, it's just all about your preference. It's just, just on what you want. It's just on what you want to choose. Then that expands this bubble of non-judgment. And of course, then you run into things like this is the, this is, this is going to be the, like the wall for, you know, most of us. What about the people who are choosing to do things, who are preferring to do things that are causing harm to innocent people or animals, right? That's for most of us, that's the line. <laughs> and then you find that you have to do this extra layer of looping of, of just practicing, practicing this, right? And then you go, okay, okay. Now I have to go back to intellectualizing the silver lining, right? You have to go, okay. Um, if, some being is being taken advantage of by some other being. Did they actually on a soul level? Is that part of their soul's journey? Is that part of their soul contract? Is that part of their soul blueprint? Did they choose that? Did they consent to that before they were born? Um, you know, and as far as I understand it, as far as I understand it, things only happen to us if we consent on a soul level for them to happen to us. Right. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's when you have to kind of go up through like, how, how does this game really work? Right. Are, are we ever really victims? Can we ever really be victimized? Can we ever really have our free will taken away? Um, and you have to like, you have to get in, in communication with your own higher self on this, right? This, this isn't going to really work for you. If you're trying to figure this out on the level of your human mind, you have to get up connected with your higher self and be like, did, did I really consent to this? 
did that person really consent to that? <laughs> right? Like, is this like, what, you know, it, it's, it's not, it's not easy. It's not simple. And then you just keep going up, right? All the way back out to source level, source level consciousness, right? Um, when you remember that this is all, we are all just one being doing this to ourselves, right? We're, we're just, we're one consciousness, the law of one. We are one consciousness doing it to ourselves. And we just forgot that we are all one, right? We forgot. And so when you, when I look at it from that way, anyway, when I realize that this is all just self inflicting things on self changes the story a little bit, right? Changes the story. So Let's see. I feel like there's something else. That's the end of my notes, but I think there's something else. Let me read over the question again. How can you have the balance and still increase your vibration? So you've done some of these things and they're helping you expand your bubble of non-judgment. They're helping you expand your bubble of neutrality, right? You're kind of getting clearer. Um, and in doing this, all of these things that I've mentioned, and of course, you're going to have other things that are going to be working for you and all of that. Practicing these things, this practice, that's what it is. It's practice. When you do this, the low vibrations start, start dropping out of you, right? They start literally just dropping out of you. Um, and it's like, okay, okay. Like, um, you come into a certain level of forgiveness and then that feeling of rage and bitterness drops out of you because you forgave yourself or because you gave, you forgave someone else that literally just the, the neutrality, the, the, the neutrality that you were able to hold allows the low, low, lower vibrational emotions to drop out of you. And because now you, now you are literally lighter. You are literally lighter because your neutrality dropped out some of those emotions and now you're vibrating higher. Now you're vibrating higher. And that's the funny thing. Is it actually objectively better for you to be vibrating higher? Well, no, it doesn't actually really matter. It's only what you prefer, right? Because all of this is just the universe exhaling and inhaling and nothing, nothing is really gone wrong here. Nothing is really broken. This, this is just the experience of this universe. And, but as you live your human life, at, at some point, we're all going to come to the understanding that I just want to feel better. Right? I just want happiness. I just want peace. I just want love. I just want joy. Um, and my personal feeling, like my personal belief is that that's basically why we, we created this physical realm so that we could remember what we want. Right? You come down into the physical realm and it's like the whole physical realm is a Petri dish. It's like, this is a science experiment, right? Where we can, we come down here to experience, to actually experience pain and suffering and despair and depression and torment even. Um, and this is the perfect place for that. The physical realm is the perfect place to, to, to live through those experiences. Why? Because you don't want to be experiencing those low frequency emotions and those traumatic experiences like fear and suffering. You don't want to have those out in the quantum space because it's uncontained, right? It's uncontained and it could just like ripple out everywhere. <laughs> that, that I think that's like a simplified, like kind of one, one slant on that, right? But that's one of my thoughts on that. Um, so we come down here into this physical Petri dish where all of the suffering and pain and misery is contained, right? It can't really spread very far and it can't really do any damage to like consciousness itself, right? It's in a Petri dish. The physical world is like a lab. And then you come down here and okay, so you know, you had your fun, you learned what it was like to feel pain, you learned what, and why do we want pain? It's because it makes us feel alive, right? <laughs> if, we come down here to learn what it's like to feel alive and that involves pain, right? It, it, it just, it does like it, at least if you have incarnated on earth before now, right? Pain has been part of this experience pain. It just, that's what we chose to play. That was how we designed the game. Right. And my thought was something about a Petri dish. <laughs> and still increase your vibration. So now you've reminded yourself what you don't want, right? You realized, okay, I, I've had enough. I've had enough of the pain and suffering. I explored that. I've had enough of the darkness. I explored that. And I've sure have had enough of other people exploring their darkness. It's like, I don't want that anymore. I don't prefer it. I don't want to choose it anymore. <sighs> so then you just choose the higher vibration. You just start choosing the vibrations that you want. 
And you can, and in that fashion, I think you can see how you can just keep choosing to step up, keep choosing to climb the staircase one little vibration at a time, choosing every day to prefer every day your better feeling reality, right? Just, just choosing to feel better because you want to feel better because now you know you definitely don't want to feel bad anymore, right? <laughs> definitely don't want to feel bad anymore. You want to feel better. And that just rises you up and up and up. And as you rise, you don't, it, it doesn't have to involve rejecting, hating or anything. It doesn't have to involve anything with those lower frequency, like vibrations with the lower frequency beings, with the, with the darkness, none of it. You just, now you're up here, now you're rising above it and you look down and you just go, well, there it all is. I used to be down there, slumming it down there in that darkness and pain and suffering, but now I'm up here. <laughs> I'm up here because I chose to be here. I'm up here because I came here. I'm up here because I climbed the mountain, right? And now you look down into the valley of suffering and you just, it just is, it's still there. And you look down and you say, hey, look, there's still some people down there. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go back down there. <laughs> I'm gonna, like, th this is like, you know, light workers and starseeds are really gonna resonate this. You know, you come up out of the valley of suffering and then you're gonna go, I'm gonna go back down there, but I'm gonna take more of my light with me this time. I'm gonna take more of my light so that when I go down there, I'm gonna basically show others a better way, right? I'm gonna keep the light within me and I'm gonna show the way for others so that they can go, hey, wait, wait a second. I don't need to feel bad. I don't need to be stuck here in darkness. I can ignite my light and I can just float up into a better feeling realm too. I can just go to a better feeling place. Yeah, so. But there's no, at no point does there ever have to be a, like a judgment of it, right? What was the, you can still choose what you want. You can choose better feeling emotions. You can choose a higher vibration and still remain completely neutral. <laughs> it's just not, it's not easy at the first, right? Because in the human experience, we go black and white, good and bad, and we go judge, 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 judge. We start to judge everything that we see and we start putting it into these boxes, dropping out of the judgmental space, dropping out of even like the need. It's like there is no need to ever even judge anything or to like to critique anything. The mind wants to critique all of these things, but if you want to rise into a higher frequency simply because it feels better, not because you're at war, not because the light is trying to defeat the darkness, <laughs> none of that, just because you want to feel better. That, that's it. This is just about your preference to feel better. And then you just start dropping out of those lower frequency emotions. You start rising up into a better feeling place and you have done it while remaining neutral. And it's just going to be expanding and expanding and expanding on, the, on this so that you can rise higher and higher and higher and you get lighter and lighter and lighter. And then you actually gain a, man, I thought I had a thought that I don't think I wrote down. Okay. Um, you gain the capacity to actually see and sense and witness the darkness and the pain and the suffering and the negativity without it like rebounding on you. Okay. Without it rebounding on you. So... <laughs> Of course, you guys, all empathic, all compassionate, you know, beings. And that has caused you, that has caused you pain and suffering because you feel so much compassion for someone who's going through something difficult and then you feel their feelings. <laughs> now now you're, you're feeling what they're going through and then it rebounds on you and now you're, like that makes you feel bad, right? Because you're experiencing their pain. But th this is the cool part is as you continuously rise up and expand and choose your, your preferred better feeling states of consciousness, it starts to like inst to insulate you, right? You become so high vibrational that you can, like the 9D Arcturians showed me, right? You can sense darkness and negativity and pain and suffering. You can sense it without actually like embodying it. It's kind of like, you know, you can feel it poking on your finger. You can feel that it's there, but it doesn't hurt you. It doesn't, it doesn't have to hurt you, right? You can just feel the pain, just like a little pinprick. You feel that it's there. You feel what it's like for that person to be going through that. You, you absolutely sense it. You feel it, and yet it doesn't get you down, right? This is the trick that all of the higher dimensional consciousnesses are doing, right? They're up there in their higher vibrational state, like blissing out. They exist in like these permanent states of bliss consciousness. And, you know, they might kind of have waves from like higher levels of bliss to lower levels of bliss, but still they're just blissed out all the time. And yet they are aware of all of Earth's pain and suffering at all times, but it doesn't it doesn't bring them down, right? It just doesn't. So that also happens 
to us humans and we experience it slowly, right? We experience it a little bit at a time. You start to realize, wow, I can really be there for someone. I can really feel their pain. I can really support them while they suffer. And yet I can still walk around having myself a fan fucking tastic day, right? And of course, at first that feels weird. At first you feel like I should, like I should be suffering along with them, but it's this higher degree of compassion, this higher degree of empathy that allows you to literally just feel what they're feeling and to be there for them and to just, and yet you are so self-contained, you are so empowered, you are so shining your light that you don't actually have to feel the despair and the suffering and the pain yourself. It's, that's that awareness of boundaries where, you know, your light is your container, right? You are your ball of light and you see what's happening on the fringes of your ball of light, but it doesn't actually darken your light, not ever. And that's, that's what we're all learning to do. So at the end of this, I know you're still going like, I don't get it. <laughs> and that's perfectly fine. Um, cause again, no, no judgment on that. That's just where you're at. And it's like, of, of course you, of course this is confusing. Of course you, you don't understand it. Like no one expects you to, right? Cause you are literally like the, the team of souls that is here to, to figure this out through hard experience. And the great thing is that every single time anyone makes a little bit of progress on this, every time anybody in any level and any capacity makes, like expands their bubble of non-judgment, then it's going to be easier for the next person to also expand their bubble of non-judgment just a little bit, just a little bit. We just do this bit by bit, piece by piece, and we just do it for as long as it takes because it doesn't, it doesn't matter, right? This is just the ex, like <laughs> the, the universe is just breathing through us and everything is just the in-breath and the out-breath. And it doesn't matter how, like, it doesn't matter how long it takes us. It's just going to take us how long as it takes. And we just keep shining the light and walking the path and expanding our bubble of non-judgment and slowly but surely rising, rising and rising higher. So that's all I got. <laughs> I love you guys. Bye.